Welcome back, this is Yamajack, and today we got Gunslinger Ashwood Asylum Suicidal and some really cold water. Here we go. Is very cold. Lock and load. Very pleasant. I like cold water. I didn't used to. I used to like, um, yeah, I was one of those people who'd go to the store and... Uh, could I get a bottle of water? But could you get it from the back? I don't really want the cold. It wasn't because, like, my teeth are sensitive. My teeth are. Um, I, I had poor oral hygiene as a child, and even up until uh, my, my recent years, I, I continue to in my adult life. Um, but you, you learn to live with it, right? It's not, it's not that big a deal. I just, I genuinely preferred room temperature water. It wasn't a... A sensitivity thing it was it was uh, the flavor of it nowadays I, I prefer that um, that very refreshing cold I don't know one day I might go back to the to the lukewarm I just uh, for me like the the temperature of what you're drinking it plays such a big part in the experience of drinking it um, and for me cold water is it, it, it's a lot more here let's, let's test it It's a lot more refreshing. Kind of keeps you engaged a little bit better, I find. Uh, whereas the the room temperature water is a lot better for like just chugging back a a, a bunch of water and, and feeling that um that that like kind of nice flow of of water down your throat. Which even if you don't have sensitive teeth, if you have like really cold water, you're still gonna get like brain freeze from it, right? And I used to be a chugger. I used to get a bottle of water and just down it. I still do on occasion. It's nice. It's it's a, it's, it's a very like it tastes good. I find. But uh, I definitely I'm I'm a I'm a fan of, of sipping on some water over over a longer period of time these days. So my uh, my preferences for drinking the water has changed. My preferences for the temperature of the water have changed accordingly. And I'm having fun with it. I know it sounds weird to say that you're having fun drinking water, but uh, it's not just like a uh, slip of the tongue. Genuinely. I have fun uh, with preparing the cold water, drinking it. It's, uh, it's an enjoyable experience to me. It's a very simple thing, but you got to enjoy the simple things in life, right? I played Sporkle. Sporkle, S-P-O-R-C-L-E, um, which is a trivia thing. I wish there were more anime-related um, things on it, because anime is definitely the the trivia that I'm going to excel at. I'm not like a, a weeb or anything like that, but but anime is. I mean, it's 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 a big part of like how I grew up, um, and uh, so like I, I'm pretty good at those those ones. A lot of the anime I haven't watched. You know, I haven't watched all of them. Like I haven't watched like Sailor Moon and Yu Yu Hakusho and. A lot of these other ones, which are which are fairly popular, especially back in like the early 2000s, um, like 1990s kind of area. I wasn't really watching anime at that time, um, so a lot of them I didn't really watch, obviously, because I wasn't there for it. Really, I mean, I was there, but I wasn't like watching anime for it. Um, so there, there's there's a few that kind of stopped me, but even then, like you you kind of know it from from seeing pictures of it and stuff like that, right? You're looking around for an anime, and they're like, hey, you should watch this one, you see it, and you're like, ah, I don't know, I'll put that on the back burner for now. So I wish there were more anime courses, or anime quizzes. It's definitely one of my, my strong suits in the, in the trivia world game. I wouldn't say I'm like a god at it, and I wouldn't even say I'm particularly great at it. It's just that out of the trivia things, it's, it's definitely what I, I do best at that, and then um, on occasion, some Zelda stuff. Some Zelda stuff I can do pretty well at. Nothing super specific, though. Like, when you want me to sit down and, like, tell you, hey, what are all of the bosses from the Zelda series? I'm like, I don't know, dude. Um. <laughs> Dodonga? <laughs> uh. Octopus Boy from Ocarina of Time and Jabu Jabu's Valley? Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really know where, uh, what, you know, you want me to name bosses? You can't put me on the spot like that. But if you're like, hey, which, which Zelda game is this one from? I'll tell you, 100%. You give me you give me a picture of a Zelda game and you're like, what Zelda game is this from? I got it. Like not a hundred percent, I guess, but like I'm pretty good at that. 
Um, if you give me like uh, like a, a picture, you like from from uh, from a Zelda game, like I'm gonna get it pretty pretty accurately, especially Ocarina of Time. If I put a lot of hours into Ocarina of Time, I used to speed run it back before speed running Ocarina of Time got kind of stupid. Um, uh, then I moved on to Ocarina of Time 3D for the 3DS. I was speedrunning that for a little while, which I might want to get back into. I haven't seen any speedruns over a while. I want to get back into speedrunning in general, honestly. Um, I just, like, I don't really have the time for it. Like, speedrunning takes up a lot of time. You might think, like, hey, it's about, like, doing things as quickly as possible isn't going to not take that much time. But, like, yeah, you get a lot of practice in. A lot of practice. And uh, that takes a lot of time to get all that practice in. But it's a good stream thing, I think. Makes for very engaging, fast-paced content. Uh, if you're streaming a game that isn't super long, uh, people who join the stream don't really have to, like, God, wait around too long for you to, to get back to something, um, like, you know, starting over again. So, my, my kind of game for, for speedrunning is typically about the 10 to 30 minutes-ish for, like, a, a decent run. Uh, and then I also like more mouse, Turns out it's true. Blood is thicker than water. like, heavy games, like, accurately click on things, rather than, uh, like, using a controller or something like that. Like, I can do it, like, um, Celeste is, uh, is a game that, that fits right into that category. I think speedruns of that are about 20 to 30 minutes-ish, if you're half-decent at it. Well, like, like, 20 minutes if you're God. 30 minutes if you're pretty good. Uh, I do like 40-ish, I think. Um, but uh, just just those kind of like controller inputs, I'm just not as good at. So it's very precise inputs. Um, Portal was a game that I was very good at speedrunning for a while. These days, you know, if I were to get back into it, I wouldn't even be top 100 probably. But uh, back in the day, I was, I was like top 10. Um, maybe even like top 5, I can't remember. I was up there though. I was, I was close to the world record. I was like, um, my, my time wasn't that close to it, but I was definitely like in the, I was, I was, you know, you, you put your best times together and it's, it's over, it's over the world record, you know? Uh, and then, and then like a whole bunch of new stuff got found and I just kind of wasn't doing it anymore and stuff kind of fell apart and I didn't do it. Um, but so that was what I used to do for, for streaming. Might get back into it. Uh, for me, the portal, it just, it, like, it got too short. Now it's under 10 minutes long, and I'm like, I don't know. I just, I want the game to have some kind of sustenance to it, you know? Um, without having too much sustenance, you know? I don't want, I want too much stuff. But I also don't want too little stuff. There has to be, there has to be stuff there, but not too much stuff. And, uh, portal's kind of fallen out of that. For me, personally. You know? Because this is, like, as, as it gets shorter... The, 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 you know, you get to make fewer and fewer mistakes. Because when, when, when you're in, like, a 15-minute race, two seconds here or there, not the end of the world. Like, it's bad, but you're not going to, like, reset because you made a two-second mistake halfway through, right? Whereas if you make a two-second mistake, you know, halfway through a nine-minute run, you might be like, yeah, I don't know, I'll just restart. You know, there's no real point. Um... And that kind of like restart mentality on it just kind of gets on my nerves. I also like speedrunning games that are really, really long. Like seven hour long speedruns. I just, I don't have the attention span for it. Um, so I would never stream it, but those are also fun. Because those ones, you know, kind of like, uh, it's the logical extreme, right? Of that kind of argument where, you know, you make a two minute mistake three hours into the run. You sure as heck ain't restarting. You gotta really blunder it for it to be like, ah, crap. We'll restart. You gotta really mess it up. And, uh, that kind of feeling, that freedom, it's nice. You know, now the early game is obviously something that's kind of a problem. One of the games that kind of fits into that category for me that I used to be interested in was Final Fantasy XIII, which speedruns for that, I think, were like five-ish hours five to six hours for like somebody who's good at it um I, I was wondering why this wasn't dead <laughs> i literally just thought it was a flesh pound like why is this one living so long what the heck dude um so that's that's one game that fits into that category of being uh like ridiculously long 
Alright, we want to just hop down. Break it over there so that we don't take the damage from it. Continue booking it. And flawless. Easy. It's the King Clutch Pound, man. They're nothing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I might, I might get into speedrunning something, rather. We were kind of speedrunning Death's Gambit for a while. Because we need the achievement. Which we'll get back into that eventually, as well. Because I want, I want all the achievements for all my Steam games. Um, but, uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see. We will see. If I had to pick a game to speedrun, what would I speedrun right now? Probably a Zelda game, honestly. I'd probably speedrun like the Minish Cap. That was a fun game. I don't know where my copy of it is anymore. Um, I'd like that or like a Fire Emblem game maybe. I've actually been thinking um, recently about starting up a Fire Emblem series. Uh, because I really love Fire Emblem. It's a fantastic series. Uh, it's actually like one of my favorite um, game IPs like ever. Uh, they really ruined it in the most recent versions of the game. They started to, to remove a lot of the stuff that I personally really liked about the games. Um, but the older games were like fan freaking fantastic. Loved them. Um, and uh, I liked it. I liked it. So I've been thinking about making up uh, like making a series on them. Kind of. Uh, Playing uh, through like the Fire Emblem 7 and onwards. I believe Fire Emblem 7 was the first uh, North American release of the Fire Emblem series. And then Fire Emblem 7 is... It was also my first Fire Emblem game. The first one in North America is the first one I played. So I've, I've been with it for as long as I like could have been with it. Uh, and I kind of fell out when they, they started to, to make a lot of changes that I didn't like. Um, but I was thinking maybe we start playing like Fire Emblem 7... Um, you know, and then move on to Fire Emblem 8, and, you know, Fire Emblem 9, um, both also really great games, Sacred Stones, and I believe that is, that's Radiant Dawn, right? Fire Emblem 9 is Radiant Dawn, right? FE9, Radiant Dawn? No, Radiant Dawn is FE10, right? No, no, what's FE10? Fire Emblem 10, FE10, Radiant... It's like Radiant FE10. What's in Fire Emblem 10? Is it Radiant Dawn? Okay, yeah, so it is it is Radiant Dawn. Um Path of Radiance. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, so Fire Emblem 9 is oops. So it's worth it. It's worth it. Uh Fire Emblem 9 is Path of Radiance, I believe. Uh, Fire Emblem 10 is Radiant Dawn, which kind of plays into uh, a few of the same characters from before. I believe you get like Sorin, um, you get um, a couple of the characters from 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 FE9, uh, and then FE11. What was FE11 again? It was for the DS, I think, right? What was FE11? Fire Emblem 11 it was Shadow Dragon, which I believe was a remake of Fire Emblem One, right? Was it? It was, right? Yeah, I think so. Fire Emblem Shadow... I'm looking. In the original Fire Emblem, original Shadow Dragon. Yeah, so Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, the first one, was released in 1980, I believe. I believe. I believe so. Remake of this, yeah, 1980 for the Famicom, yeah. Um, and then Fire Emblem 12, what's Fire Emblem 12? This was, uh, Hikari no Tokage no Eiyu? 
Heroes of the Wind? <laughs> what? Is that is that how is that how that get translated? No. Hikari to Kage no e Kage. No, Kaze is wind. Um, that would be like Hero of War or something. Or War of Heroes. Um, don't think that got out in North America. Fire Emblem 13. Awakening. I remember Awakening. That was a fun one. You got to play as the, the Black Knight or whatever, which was cool. Uh, and then Fire Emblem. Let's just look at the Fire Emblem series. Go to the Wikipedia for it. Heck it, dude. Heck it. Games. List the Fire Emblem video games, okay? So you got Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light from 1990. You got Gaiden, which is 2. Mystery of the Emblem. Genealogy of the Holy War. Thrasia 776. The Binding Blade, which was 6. Fire Emblem, which had no other name with it. I believe it was called the Sword of Flame or like the Burning Sword or something like that um, in Japan. But in North America, it was just released as Fire Emblem. Uh, then you got 7. The Sacred Stones. 8. Path of Radiance 9, Radiant Dawn 10, Awakening, uh, and there was the Shadow Dragon remake in between that. Fire Emblem Fates, which is garbage, in my opinion. No, Fates isn't actually that bad. Fates is good, I think. Um, but the Three Houses, I believe, was trash. Um, yeah. Um, that's, that's my opinion on it, anyway. I think that, uh, so, so the main problem that I have with the Fire Emblem series these days is that they remove a lot a of the challenge that f made Fire Emblem fun for me. Um, like you used to back in the, the olden days, back in my day, uh, but back in the olden days you'd have, you know, your weapons and they'd have durability. So like, uh, you know, your typical iron sword would have like 40 uses and then it would break. Um, and you'd be able to get fancy swords, you know, you'd be able to get like a, a killing edge or something. It's called a killing edge. Uh, which was like a, a crit sword, a high crit sword, and would have only, you know, 20 uses. Um, or you'd be able to get like a, a very strong, powerful weapon, but it only had, you know, 10 or something. You know, they, they, it was kind of like a, a balancing thing. Even the like, super, super end game stuff that you'd get, the like, really, really rare items back in the day, they were also restricted by the number of, uh, of uses that you could get for them. So you'd get like your super legendary spell book for your mage, which is like the best spell in the game, and you'd only be able to use it like 20 times before it's over, so you really had to budget the use of that, right? And it made this sort of interesting dynamic where you'd be able to, where you'd continue to buy like the lower tier spells because they're affordable, uh, and you'd be able to use them against uh, enemies that, that don't really need to, to use anything more expensive than that and it, it kind of made for this this really fun um, like strategy that you got to kind of play with it uh, and um, they got rid of that so in a fire emblem game these days you get a weapon and it's, it's it has unlimited uses you don't have to worry about it so like you kind of lose that diversity of the weapons, and then they they put like a, a big focus on the weapon triangle and um, uh, like different sort of aspects of combat to, to kind of simulate it. Um, so you kind of have to like you know if you're fighting against somebody with a sword, you want to use a you know an axe, no a spear, I believe, right? Um, if you're fighting against somebody that's you know the light element spell or whatever, then you want to use a, a a dark element, or is it an anima? Can't remember. It's been a while since I played any Fire Emblem. Um, but you know, you'd, you'd be like that kind of stuff, right? And uh, that's fine. It definitely makes for some kind of diversity, but for me, it just it really takes away a lot of what uh, what I loved about the Fire Emblem series, which was that kind of micromanagement of all the weapons and the durabilities and and all that kind of stuff that you really had to, to worry about to be able to uh, to actually succeed in um, in these wars that you'd be fighting. And they just removed it completely. So you, just, you get a new weapon and it's just like, yep, this is your weapon now. So you get this weapon. Now this is your only weapon until we get, you know, your, your upgrade. And it's just, um, for me, it just kind of made it cheaper. It removes a lot of the strategy. Not necessarily the difficulty. 
Because the games are still hard. Like, uh, Fire Emblem Fates is, is a really hard game. Like, you have to very, very... You have, to, you have to very carefully plan out, you know, where all of your units are going, and the positioning of them all, uh, and, uh, you know, make sure they're all, you know, at with, with the right equipment and, and all that kind of... Like, there is still difficulty planning strategy. Um, they just they just took away like novel, the part of it that I really liked, um, which I think was frustrating a lot of people. But for me personally... Like that's that's a big part of what made those games fun, was was managing that you know, like I loved when you'd have, you know, one durability left on your, your 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 crit sword or whatever, and uh, you know you you you'd be fighting against the the boss, and you get the crit, you'd use the last durability and you kill the boss. It it just it like that kind of a feeling is just something you can't reproduce by arbitrarily restricting, you know, what units can fight against what units, because, like, you kind of know it, it, that, you, that you're going to be able to just, like, do it, and you kind of know that anyway, even if you have the durability, but just for me, it kind of it cheapened the experience a little bit, and I didn't really appreciate that. And then, uh, I believe it was three houses, which removed, like, a lot of even the basic mechanics that that made Fire Emblem fun because um, I believe in that one you got to like you had to like actually walk around and stuff and then you'd like get into a battle like kind of like like Final Fantasy 7 style or something you know um, just like random fights and uh, then you'd in in the fights there'd be this little small room that you would fight within uh, and you'd have this this very small battlefield um, to fight on, and it just, to me, it just, I just wish that they had, uh, not done that, you know? Like, it, it's really distancing itself from, from what I personally viewed as being good, classic Fire Emblem, and I, I think it's a lot more accessible, um, because I think that the Fire Emblem that I want is just far too hard <laughs> for, like, a casual audience. I get that, you know, like... I get that, I do. There's far too much micromanagement for the casual audience. Like, I get it, you know? I get it. I, I'm, I'm still just like, I wish that they did it anyway. Because it'd be really nice. It'd be really, really awesome if uh, they just didn't care and made a Fire Emblem game that kind of went back to its roots. I think it's kind of similar to, like, Monster Hunter, right? Like, Monster Hunter World did a similar thing. To, to the Monster Hunter audience. I think that a lot of people who played Monster Hunter look at it and be like, yeah, like, I get it. You know, this appeals more to a, a more casual audience, but, like, ugh. This is not a good run. But, like, you know, they, they just want their classic Monster Hunter experience just with, you know, updated graphics and updated, you know, maybe, like, a new story with some new monsters and stuff. They just want to play good old Monster Hunter. Um, and Monster Hunter kind of took that. Monster Hunter World just didn't really do that for them. That's kind of what's happening for me, or what has been happening for me with the Fire Emblem series for so long, because they just like changing up the the formula with it so so much that uh, it stops being what what I fell in love with as, as a child. And that's that makes me sad at times. Definitely does. So I wish they were good. I haven't played. I haven't finished Fates. I got stuck at one level. Um, and then uh, my sister ended up borrowing my DS to play Luigi's Mansion 2, which I also haven't beaten. Um, and uh, I just—I never really ended up finishing it. I should go get it back. I also haven't finished Three Houses. I honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna finish Three Houses. I think Three Houses is the one that I'm thinking of, um, where you have the like actual like movement and stuff rather than being just the turn-based stuff. Um, which for me was just a lot less interesting. And it, like it's it's got the same kind of stuff. You just get a weapon, and it's like there's your weapon. You know, here's your upgrade. Use it forever. And uh, I just I didn't. Yeah, makes me sad. But I'm thinking about doing a Fire Emblem series anyway. Because there are a few games in it that are like really good. You know, like Fire Emblem Seven, uh, Fire Emblem Eight, Sacred Stones. Fire Emblem 9, Path of Radiance, is like a 
friggin' amazing game. How much is it? If I look at eBay, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. It's like an expensive game because it came out the GameCube. Um, it's expensive. Yeah, it's six hundred and forty dollars for a, uh, a brand new. I have one in very good condition. Um, with with like the um, with the the case, with the disc in good condition, with the um, manuals and all of that. Like it's very very good condition. So I've got like a seven hundred dollar game in that. Um, which is is cool, right? I'm never gonna sell it because it's worth way more than seven hundred dollars to me. Um, but it's like that's that's how good it is, you know. It's it's a very sought after game. Um, and uh, so it's it's like that's that's probably the best game in the series, in my opinion. Um, and then Fire Emblem Ten Radiant Dawn also extremely good. Uh, kind of plays off of the the Path of Radiance. It isn't as good as Path Path of Radiance, but it is also extremely good. The story in the two of them is is uh, is by far the best, in my opinion. Um, and then Awakening is also quite enjoyable. Um, I believe after that they started removing the durability. And to me, that just kind of like ruins it. But uh, even without the durability, um, I think the Fates is still a fun game. Uh, Three Houses went far too deviant for me to, to say that it's, like, particularly great. I still, like, I haven't played it much. I only played it for, like, an hour. And I was just like, yeah, no, this isn't Fire Emblem. Like, I'm not playing Fire Emblem right now. It might not be Three Houses. It might be a different game, but... It was, uh, it was, it was far too deviant from, from what I expect of Fire Emblem. It might be, like, a spin-off or something like that, too, right? It might be. I don't know. Let's see. Let's uh, look, look at the Fire Emblem spin-offs. Uh, Fire Emblem Heroes. That's for Android. Fire Emblem Warriors. Warriors. No, I I believe it was Three Houses because they they changed how things work to such an enormous extent. I think right. Fire Emblem Three. Houses. Is, is, is this the game that I'm thinking of? I'm honestly not sure. Like, I don't know. I'm thinking of some game, okay? And I didn't like it much. It was a Fire Emblem series I saw at GameStop when I was there. I was like, alright, I'll pick it up. I haven't played this one. I'll grab it. So much I like the Fire Emblem series. I see Fire Emblem, I buy it. <laughs> but I'm thinking about making a series on it. It's it's probably like a better stream game than anything else, but... I, uh, I'd i love to play it again. Because uh, all of those games are just phenomenal, you know? And I own them all. Um, so if I can get like a proper way to stream off those consoles, I'd love to do that. Realistically, I'd probably be emulating. Um, I don't think it really changes much to emulate them, because uh, that's for the DS, which I believe we can emulate pretty well with, like, I don't know, something. Um, and then the Wii, which, again, we can emulate very well. Dolphin is, like, very, very mature. Um, and then that's, like, it. Uh, Awakening is for the 3DS, which I'm not sure if we can emulate yet. Can we emulate the 3DS? I don't know. I own it. So I wouldn't feel bad about pirating it and, you know, emulating it. Um, same with, uh, you know, Fate. Again, I own it. Three Houses, I believe I own it, unless I'm thinking of a different game. But um, definitely, like, you know, it goes back to, like, the Game Boy Advance, even, like, for the original Fire Emblem, the original North American Fire Emblem, anyway. And um, the uh, Sacred Stone. Sacred Stones is, uh, they're, they're, they're both... For the Game Boy Advance, which is like highly emulatable, so I don't know. We'll uh, think about it. Would be fun. Could be fun. Fire like the the Fire Emblem Seven is definitely like it would be a, a big project to uh, do it because there's also like posts game con like once you beat the game, you kind of unlock new stuff and I believe if you beat it in different ways you like unlock different things and I want to get all of it um, Sacred Stones I believe like it has post um, ending 
content even, so you'd, you'd want to finish all that as well. Um, but, yeah. We'll think about it. We'll think about it for sure. Anyway, that's going to do it for today, so thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to you more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.